reasonably share and care for resources. After settlers arrived, it became subject to the three-figure wampum belt last carried by Algonquin elder William Commando, which commemorates the sharing of this land with English, French, and Indigenous nations under the governance of natural law. We recognize with gratitude the knowledge Smith Falls and the knowledge of, sorry, knowledge of Smith Falls and contributions that the Algonquin peoples bring to the municipality of Smith Falls. Today, Smith Falls is also home to other Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We extend our res respect to all First Nations, Inuit, and Metis people for their valuable past and present contributions. We are mindful of, we are mindful of broken covenants and the need to reconcile with all our relations. Together, we may, we may care for this land and each other, drawing on the strength of our mutual history of nation building through peace and friendship, being mindful of generations to come. Uh, with my announcements today, I simply have one announcement, which is a proclamation, Rett Syndrome Awareness Month, October 2021. Whereas Rett Syndrome is a rare neurological condition that is rarely seen in males, but is seen almost exclusively in females and is believed to occur in one in 10,000 uh, females at birth. Parents believe they have a healthy child and symptoms do not appear until a regression between six to 18 months of age. And whereas throughout their lives, these courageous children will need total care and constant support for their family, from their family. They will com combat many medical challenges. They may have seizures, osteoporosis, scoliosis, uh, breath holding, hyperventilation, nutritional problems, and so much more. Apraxia, which is the in inability to motor plant, is one of the most challenging aspects of Rett syndrome, along with loss of speech. And whereas in 1999, it was discovered that Rett syndrome is primarily caused by a sporadic mutation in the MECP2 gene on the X chromosome. And since its discovery, there are many research projects taking place across Ontario and Canada. And whereas there is no Canadian Rett Syndrome Association, the Ontario Rett Syndrome Association, in brackets ORSA, has members from any provinces, from many provinces across Canada, and through donations and fundraising efforts, ORSA finances the Canadian Rett Syndrome Registry has funded over $500,000 in Canadian Rett Syndrome research projects and financially supports the three Rett clinics in Ontario with one in Ottawa, Toronto, and London. The Rett Syndrome clinics provide direct critical support to the families and their child on care and management issues. Now, therefore, I, Sean Panko, Mayor of the Town of Swiss Falls, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2021 as Rett Syndrome Awareness Month in the Town of Swiss Falls, and I urge all citizens to make an effort this month to learn about Rett syndrome, fight stigma, light can to purple, and wear a purple ribbon to show support. Uh, moving on in our agenda, uh, I'll ask for disclosure monetary interest. I see none. Uh, we have no delegations uh, this afternoon, no adoption of minutes. Uh, I assume we have a few reports. So I'll go by show of hands. Uh, Councillor Allen, you're first. Yeah, it's my pleasure uh, to report tonight from the Railway Museum of Eastern Ontario. Um, in the past, every year we've looked forward to participating and, and giving the community the Polar Express event. Um, we're calling it Santa Train presently because there's going to be some variation to the what we've done in the past. Because of COVID restrictions, we've been forced to um, really look at this carefully as we progress. And we may still at the last minute have to cancel, but we are anticipating it. So getting it ready for that event. It will run only on Saturdays and it'll start at 12 and end at five. You will get your tickets through Eventbrite, um, $10 per adult, five for children and a family rate of $30. The train will run every 20 minutes and there'll be three trains for six hours. So there's 18 trains in total rides. The caboose capacity has to be capped at 10 and unless they're permitted because of a family, if there's a family of six or whatever, that could happen. Um, all riders 12 years and over must show proof of vaccination. There's gonna be one caboose and we've deemed because it's so much faster and easier in the winter to use our locomotive 428 to pull it. And then we're going to decorate our um, our, our other vehicles very beautifully and you'll be able to get your picture taken with Santa outside in front of the engine and um, there'll be more I'll, I'll share more as as the come comes forward but I know all of our committees and groups are struggling with you know what to keep because it's important and what we have to adapt and and change so I'm hoping that uh, we're able to do this great event because families love it thanks thank you we're all encouraged to hear that news 
Uh, other reports, Councilor Dwyer. Thank you, Mayor Pankow. I'll give a report from the Rideau Environmental Action League. So October was and has been a very busy month for real. Um, it started off at the beginning of the month with the grand opening of Real's Tool Lending Library. So Real was uh, fortunate to receive a grant to evaluate some additional service options um, that Real could be providing to the community. And the option they landed on was a tool lending library. Um, so the way it works is that Real at the store will have an array of tools and it is a good array of tools. Anything that you would be missing from your own workshop is there from a toolbox with the basics all the way up to tools that I can't even name. I, I definitely saw a tile cutting saw, which my husband told me that we will eventually be using. Um, but the way it works is that a 12 month membership uh, is purchasable for $45. Uh, alternatively, on a short-term basis, they're uh, offering a six-month uh, membership for $25. And from there, you would call the store and reserve your tools for a week um, at a time. Or alternatively, you can email them at tooллibrary at realaction.ca. Uh, they do not currently have an online uh, resource of tools available, but they are very helpful and very welcoming to anyone who is looking uh, to borrow tools. Um, so by all means, go check it out. It is certainly um, far more cost effective. Uh, than renting a, a professional grade tool. And for those do-it-yourself home projects, it's probably just what you need. So it's a very exciting project. Sean and I were available on the second to do the grand uh, ribbon cutting with a chainsaw. It was, it was a whole thing. Uh, so congratulations to Real on that front. Um, also in October, you may have seen in the newspaper that Real was recognized for shoreline cleanup effort along the Rideau. So a group of volunteers took on three sites up and down the Rideau uh, and did some shoreline restoration and general cleanup. So always good to see our waterfront uh, getting a little bit cleaner, especially as the, the water levels start to drop and things jump out as surprises at the fall. Um, the last update I have is with respect to Real's typical harvest dinner. So once again, because of COVID, we are not proceeding with the harvest dinner that we would normally do in October. Instead, we are going to do the second annual fall online auction, which will run between November 1st and 13th as a fundraiser. Uh, you can go online and take a look at www.32auctions.com forward slash Real 2021 and try and outbid each other uh, for phenomenal uh, online auction items. It's always a good time, and I would highly encourage Council to take a look and support Real. Um, I believe that's all my updates for Real. I do have a meeting tonight, so I will have more at the next Council meeting. Um, I think that's all for me. Thank you, Mayor Pankow. Thank you, and, and I happened to stop by in the weekend and drop off uh, some tools that I had even forgot I had or use ring frequently. And, and one of the big benefits of this is if, if you need the tool again, you simply go back and borrow it when you need it. And one of the things I dropped off was a tabletop bandsaw that I have not used probably in 10 years. It keeps occupying space and in, in the corner of the garage and this way other people can use it. And if I need it, I can simply use my membership to, to get it. So I think it's a great initiative. I think it'd be very, uh, very well supported. Uh, additional uh, reports, I think Councillor Alford. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, two quick ones uh, from the planning advisory that both uh, Councilor Brennan and I are, are on. Uh, there are two uh, that came forward more recently with site plan applications from 44 Chambers, which is the affordable housing project. Uh, and it is will come forward to council. Um, it is um, 21 one bedroom units, six two bedroom units and one three bedroom units. So uh, this is a very welcome uh, development in our town and we can't all wait until uh, its completion. The second thing most recently was for uh, 17 to 23 Beckwith Street, an application for site plan control as well, which is to add a second story and six residential units on, um, so, uh, on Beckwith Street. Uh, above the, um, between the TD Bank and what used to be a, a, um, a retail beside Boomtown. So that's gonna be interesting and really great infill 
and probably more aesthetically pleasing uh, as it fits into the downtown and that also will be coming forward to council. Just one more, uh, your worship, uh, not really reports, but to remind on behalf of the DBA, just a reminder that um, this week is small business week. Uh, and so please continue to shop local. And also uh, a reminder from for anyone who is looking for work that there is a job fair on October 25th at Centennial Park between uh, noon and three. Um, and there will be on-site interviews, um, activities for children if you have them with you. And again, it's an opportunity for um, businesses to get the employees they need and employees to find the right fit that they would like to work at. So that's all for me, Your Worship. Thank you for the reports. Yes, Councillor McKenna. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll just re-report uh, on some of the news coming out of last week's uh, County Council meeting, uh, corporate services and community services. In community services, we learned that uh, there's a, a new cost sharing formula for children's services uh, with the province. It used to be 50-50, uh, sorry, it used to be 80-20. The province would pay 80% and the county and the town of Smith Falls would pay the other 20. It's going to 50-50. Uh, so it has substantial uh, impact on both the county's budget and ours. For example, um, in 2020, it'll increase uh, by $95,000. And it's being um, brought in over a three year period. And there's some mitigation that the province has allowed uh, along the way, however, at the end, uh, when we reach the final increase, it will be an additional three over three hundred thousand dollars that will be coming to the local ratepayers and the town of Smith Falls to cover those um, those costs for children's services. Um, I also uh, wanted to report on the that leads me to the budget discussion we had at the county uh, on November nineteenth. We're going to have our first budget meeting. Uh, half day to discuss the county budget. They produce a very good uh, budget binder, which I'll receive and Mayor Panka will receive probably a week ahead of the 19th. If any member of council wants to see it, because uh, I'm happy to share it, you'll see where the county is proposing these increases. And thus you'll know what the, uh, through our cost sh sharing agreement with the town of Smith Falls, you'll see the impact uh, beyond the children's services uh, changes. So that's coming up. Uh, and the final uh, one from the county is, um, there have been updates to the uh, Bill 108, which covers um, development charges. Uh, and so the change is the county has uh, um, completed a development charge background study it's a very interesting report, and as Smith Falls is considering it, I would recommend to count or to my colleagues on Smith Falls Council to look at the county website and uh, from for last week, the thirteenth, and you'll see that background development charges study. Um, one of the updates that I noted from the uh, county's official plan, where they thought uh, they had a very, let's say, modest increase in the population of the county increases, but they've almost um, they. They've increased that projection that we're going to hit 30,000 new people in Lanark County in the next 15 years. And that was not projected uh, for that we would hit that amount of an increase for quite some time. Thus, the demand on a new development. And uh, it will be interesting as we do our own uh, research into this, just what we anticipate the growth of Smith Falls uh, population to be, because that has a direct bearing on. Uh, the details of our development charges. So there's a lot happening there. Um, and just a bit of trivia, which will come up later, but uh, this is trivia about municipalities generally. Um, the warden, uh, Warden Lowry, let the uh, informed council that, um, let's say of all the taxes that uh, people pay in Canada, so federal, provincial and municipal, only nine cents of every dollar goes to municipal governments. 
which is very interesting. So 91% of the taxes that our ratepayers are paying goes to federal and provincial for services and just nine cents uh, or 9% or nine, nine cents of every dollar goes to municipalities. So we're very close to the population we serve and people watch our budget development very carefully. But in the grand scheme of things, um, I think it's excellent value for money uh, how municipalities in Canada are being operated. Thank you, Worship. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Any further reports? I've got a, a few myself this evening. Um, just to bring Council up to date, on October 4th, uh, CEO Morris and I met virtually with municipal leaders and uh, senior staff from our uh, various municipalities that are participants with a recreational cost sharing agreement. And there's been some work going on over the last several months uh, with regards to the renewal of that agreement uh, at the end of this year. And uh, I would say that uh, there's been some updating of information and a very positive meeting, very encouraging development, but it'll be coming to, of course, uh, our council and respective councils for endorsement, uh, hopefully next month. Uh, but uh, good progress on that front. Uh, and again, just a brief update, October 7th, um, we also met with representatives of the Smith Law Flying Club just for the update uh, of the operating agreement and uh, just to advise council that talks there are, are very encouraging. And again, we, we anticipate having uh, a, a new agreement uh, before council, uh, hopefully in the very near future. Uh, October 14th, um, uh, yeah, at corporate services at the county. Just um, one interesting uh, discussion topic was hybrid meetings. So the, the county is operating in a hybrid model for its meetings today. So uh, most members were in person. One member was uh, was uh, tuned in from home and the previous month both Councillor McKenna and I had tuned in from home. Uh, more space for physically, physical separations and for enabling people there. But uh, basically the one of the discussion points was do they enable that to continue on more of a permanent basis. And so I think at some point in time, it'd be interesting for our council to have that discussion again about should we enable uh, some type of hybrid meetings? And obviously we've got uh, town hall renovations and uh, council chamber renovations to keep into consideration, but uh, it seems to be uh, so maybe some adaptation to a hybrid model may be suitable uh, in the future. On Saturday, October 16th, I was pleased to be at the grand opening of the ORV headquarters, uh, a new uh, outdoor recreational vehicle uh, facility on Union Street. And it's uh, uh, from sales to service to a lot of aftermarket installation of products. Uh, great to see this business uh, opening in Smith Falls. It had operated in smaller space in Carlton Place uh, until recently now occupying uh, the entire building. So very, uh, very encouraging development and obviously for our outdoor enthusiasts, uh, a great opportunity to, uh, I guess, leverage their interest into modifications and upgrades to their, uh, the variety of ATVs they may, they may use and, and the opportunity for local service. Uh, this morning, I participated in the county's climate action committee and that's, um, we meet monthly. Uh, we have meetings planned throughout the balance of this year and into next year. Some encouraging developments there, I guess, uh, the one, I guess, collecting climate action ideas from the community. So there will be some um, opportunity for feedback from the community to add to what has already been considered. The, the corporate inventory has been completed for the county, uh, doing more of a community and the community inventory as well. So we, there's sort of milestones we know we know we need to achieve. Those have been set, but now it's a matter of, of the action that's required. So, uh, uh, in November, they anticipate having a, uh, a seminar uh, workshop for key stakeholders. Uh, that could include, as an example, contractors, heating and cooling uh, contractors to help um, guide some discussion regarding uh, climate sensitive and climate responsible heating and cooling. As well, uh, there was a discussion at a previous meeting on the conversion of the county fleet, uh, vehicle fleet and equipment fleet from gas power to electric. So an inventory was taken to assess what's possible. And one of the challenges today, of course, would be understanding um, where technology is today and where it will be in the, in the coming years. So of course there, there are electric trucks which are coming, but there are not yet electric backhoes and other pieces of equipment that would be critical to, to the county's operations. So uh, that will be an evolving topic, but there is widespread consensus that the county needs to be uh, encouraged uh, to convert its equipment list. 
And of course, um, equipment lists would include chainsaws, whippersnappers, blowers, riding lawnmowers, and things like that, which are all now available uh, in, in battery operated versions. So a resolution was passed uh, by the committee uh, to that will go to the Public Works Committee of, of County Council, encouraging uh, the county to, whenever possible, uh, to opt for uh, electric equipment uh, in lieu of gas powered equipment and for a number of reasons. So I think something that um, we're, we're, we also made our commitment to the Partners for Climate Protection, we're developing our climate action plan. And I think one of the, one of the interim steps may be bringing this to uh, Earth. I see you're on board here to that we can bring this to a future council meeting for discussion on the conversion of our power equipment uh, to battery powered. And that's it for my reports. We have uh, one bylaw today, and that is with Councillor Dwyer, please. Thank you. This is an exciting one. Moved by myself and second, sec seconded by Councillor McGuire that a bylaw to provide uh, to uh, a bylaw to provide to undertake the 2022 municipal elections through the use of the alternative voting method internet slash telephone be received and read a first time and taken and read a second time. Thank you. Move by Councillor Dwyer, second by Councillor McGuire. The bylaw to provide to undertake the 2022 municipal election through the use of the alternative voting method internet slash telephone be received read a first time and taken as read a second time. All in favor? Carrie, thank you. Discussion, Councilor Dwyer? Thank you. So as I said, this is an exciting bylaw. So despite the fact that the election is almost exactly one year away, um, we are already prepping um, in accordance with the Municipal Act for election protocol. So at this time, the clerk's office has brought forward a report with options for how uh, municipal elections will take place next year. Each local municipality is eligible to decide their own voting method. Uh, and the recommended voting method this time around, which has received the endorsement of council, is internet and telephone voting. So similar to uh, the last election, where we offered both telephone, uh, internet voting, plus a uh, mailed ballot, um, we're going to proceed strictly with, with the digital voting. Uh, the clerk's office will be making available a uh, voter help center. So not necessarily a center uh, where you will come the day of the election and cast your vote, but a center in the lead up to the election that would allow um, people who are uh, confused by the system or have questions about the system to inquire with municipal staff about how it works. And, and if it's so inclined, they may cast their vote that day. Um, otherwise they can go home and, uh, and use the system uh, in the privacy of their own home. I thought it was interesting when we debated this at Committee of the Whole because Councillor Allen actually uh, indicated that uh, she had um, uh, received feedback from somebody who was really proud of the fact that they were able to learn uh, the online voting system and then um, be able to go out and further educate people about how it works. So I think it's, it's a really good thing for the municipality. There's cost uh, effective, um, service delivery options that come with this. Uh, and we are very, very much looking forward to the 2022 election period. Great, thank you. Any further discussion? May I have a third reading, please? Yes, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McGuire, that a bylaw to provide to undertake the 2022 municipal election through the use of the alternative voting method, internet slash telephone, be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered bylaw 10265-2021. Thank you. Moving Councillor Dwyer, second by Councillor McGuire, that a bylaw to provide to undertake the 2022 municipal election through the use of the alternative voting method, internet slash telephone, be now with a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered bylaw 10265-2021. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Uh, that's our only bylaw. Our first motion is with Councillor McKenna, please. Yes, Your Worship, uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Alford that Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls grant a 2022 pre-budget approval in the amount of $50,000 to allow staff to proceed with a request for a proposal 
for consulting services respecting the preparation of an affordable housing committee improvement plan and to undertake the update and review of the current downtown community improvement plan. Thank you. Discussion, please. Yes, the, the first community improvement plan was introduced in Smith Falls in 2015, I believe. And it was always intended to uh, run for five or so years and then do a review of how well it was working. Um, so we wanted to take a look at that. It, it's uh, probably past its best before date needs a refresh. And at the same time, uh, council uh, adopted in December, 2020, the housing task force recommendation. I think there was about 17 recommendations. And one of them was certainly looking at this um, a affordable housing community improvement grant. Uh, so it'd be similar. One is going to look at your our downtown core facade and some interior work to encourage updates. And the housing uh, CIP would be used uh, for, you if, if adopted, would be used to update your home to um, incorporate um, more housing options within your home, uh, secondary suites, et cetera. So we don't know how it's going to work exactly. So this study, uh, we want to get going on it. And so we're, and if we wait till January, usually a procurement of a consultant of this type takes uh, two or three months to secure. So staff recommended and council agreed that let's get going. Uh, so we pre-approved 50,000 out of the 2022 budget and uh, staff will proceed then in securing the consultant going out to tender. Uh, we'll look at the results of that and report back to council. That's uh, my report. Thank you. That's Any further discussion on this item? It's moved by Councillor McKenna, second by Councillor Alford. The Council of the Corporation of Tennessee Falls grant 2022 pre-budget approval in the amount of $50,000 to allow staff to proceed with a request for proposal for consulting services respecting the preparation of an affordable housing community improvement plan and to undertake the update and review of the current downtown community improvement plan. All in favor? Gary, thank you very much. On to item 8.2, Councillor Brennan, please. Thank you. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Allen. Whereas the Cor Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls supports the County of Lanark's resolution support for UCD SB re permanent remote learning. And whereas Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls hereby supports the Upper Canada District School Board in conveying their concerns related to permanent remote learning of student education programs to the province. And whereas the mayor be authorized to send a letter to the Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, expressing council support for the Upper Canada District School Board seeking clarification on the proposed legislative changes to Education Ontario and outlining the Town of Falls concerns related to such proposal. Thank you, discussion please. Yeah, uh, we had a presentation um, a little while ago from the, uh, from the school board, Upper Canada School Board, and uh, they're concerned about any changes that are coming forward for especially rural schools. And, uh, and they, they have some concerns about being consulted. So. Uh, of course, we, we all support uh, as much consultation as possible, and we want to support uh, uh, the Upper Canada District School Board in that endeavor. I know that the county has passed a similar, uh, a similar motion as well, so we just want uh, our voices to be heard. Thank you. Any further discussion? It's moved by Councillor Brennan, second by Councillor Allen. Whereas Council of the Corporation of Tennis Smith Fall supports the County of Lanark's resolution support for UCDSB, re-permanent remote learning, or as Council of the Corporation of Tennis Smith Falls hereby supports the Upper Canada District School Board in conveying their concerns related to permanent remote learning of student education programs to the province. And whereas the mayor be authorized to send a letter to Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, expressing council support the Upper Canada District School Board seeking clarification on proposed legislative changes to education in Ontario and outline the Town of Smith Falls concern related to such a proposal. All in favor? Carried, thank you. 
And our final motion is with Councillor Alfred, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McKenna. Whereas Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls passed bylaw 10231-2021, being a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 6808-94, respecting two vacant properties on the southwest side of Percy Street between Lyra Street and Ross Street. And whereas section 45 uh, bracket 1.4 bracket of the Planning Act details that council may allow for the submission of a variance application where a resolution has been passed with respect to a special request. And whereas council of the corporation of the town of Smith Falls received a request from senior planner Granke as detailed in report 2021-142 to lift the moratorium on a minor variance application respecting 224 to 238 Percy Street for which a site specific zoning amendment was granted in the last two years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council of the Corporation deem it appropriate to allow for a submission of minor variance application pertaining, pertaining to 224 to 238 Percy Street. Thank you. Discussion, please. Yes, yeah, sure. Council um, has to make an exception to a two year moratorium on changes to site specific zoning amendments. In order to accommodate a minor variance uh, at the at the Kerfoot development, um, this allows the, the developer to adjust the placement of the buildings on the two lots and to increase the separation between the buildings at the interior lot line and therefore reduce the already approved three meter yard interior side yard setback. If that's not complicated enough for you. Um, this uh, this development is uh, very welcome and will add 16 new townhouses to, um, to Percy Street. Uh, Council, when they discussed it, it was discussed um, uh, at last cow and Council supports the exception. Thank you. Any further discussion? It's moved by Councillor Alfred, second by Councillor McKenna. Whereas Council of the Corporation of Tennessee Falls passed by law 10231-2021, being a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 6080-94, respecting two vacant properties on the southwest side of Percy Street between Lyra Street and Ross Street, whereas section 45.1.4 of the Planning Act details that council may allow for the submission of a variance application where a resolution has been passed with respect to a special request. Whereas council of the Corporation of Town of Smith Falls received a request from senior planner Granke as detailed in report 2021-142 to lift the moratorium on a minor variance application respecting 224 to 238 Percy Street for which a site specific zoning amendment was granted in the last two years. Now therefore be resolved that council corporation deem it appropriate to allow for, this, for a submission of a minor variance application pertaining to 224 to 238 Percy Street. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of our official business. Uh, inquiries and announcements. Councillor Brennan. Thank you. And I'm happy to uh, have a couple of announcements for the Heritage House tonight. And they're very busy, of course. And uh, uh, first of all, last week, uh, they had planned a family fun day or fall fun day. And of course, on Saturday, it rained uh, <laughs> like crazy. So uh, that's been changed. Uh, to this coming Saturday uh, from 11 to two. Admission will just be by donation. Uh, all families are welcome. Uh, they have a pumpkin carving competition going on. And I would say that uh, you still have an opportunity to enter a pumpkin. So bring it over to the museum. And on Saturday, you can vote for uh, your favorite pumpkin on that day. Uh, there'll be a pumpkin walk, there'll be games and activities, photo ops, uh, candy apples, cotton candy, popcorn, and a barbecue, uh, which uh, myself and my friend Gary Lackey will be serving the, the barbecue, and uh, there'll be horse-drawn wagon rides with a small charge of $4. So that's 11 to 2 on this Saturday. Now, it's a busy season for the Heritage House because it's a really creepy place, as we all know. Um, uh on the 22nd and 23rd, the 29th and 30th, there'll be spooky tours at the Heritage House, if you dare, they say. 
Um, so that, that will be between seven and nine on those dates, the 22nd and 23rd, 29th and 30th. And uh, if you've ever gone on that, you know uh, that they put on a really good show. It'll all be COVID safe. Uh, and it'll be first come, first serve. And uh, the admission for that is $10 for the adult victims and $5 for ages 15 and under. Anybody that is 12 and under, please have your parents take you. So those are the, uh, the dates for that, the 22nd, 23rd, 29th, and 30th at the Heritage House. And if you drive by there, it looks uh, almost too scary to go in, but uh, go at your own peril, as they say. Thank you. And, and uh, we went to the, to the spooky tour on Saturday night and, and your, your words uh, ring true. There was some real spookiness to, to the building and, and some uh, unique, scary stories that you may not have heard before. So yeah, if you haven't had a chance to get there, uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be an experience to remember. Okay, any further inquiries or announcements? Before we go back to Trivia Master, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I pulled one out of my hat here. Yeah, and this is uh, it's it could be Halloween related, so uh, not necessarily local. So there's your clues. So two people of note left this world this week. Who were they? Leo Boyven. <laughs> Colin Powell. That was one I had written down. Sorry, which one? Colin Powell, which was today. Oh, didn't so I'll, didn't the drummer from a older rock band die? I'll I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask the question again. They left this world this week. Ah, William Shatner. That's right. Yes. But he came back. Yeah. He so left the world and came back. <laughs> world Shatner blasting off to space and Colin Powell flo floating to heaven. Well done. Okay. Any other inquiries or announcements? Oh, we need we need trivia for our next meet our next uh, council meeting. We need a volunteer here. I don't see any hands going up. Boy, okay. Okay, <laughs> Wendy's got it. Peter, great timing there. Just uh, Okay, uh, a German, Councilor McGuire. Thanks, Your Worship. Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Allen that this council adjourn its proceedings at 5.40 p.m. and stand so adjourned until the next duly called meeting of council. Thank you. Moved by Councilor McGuire, seconded by Councilor Allen. This council adjourns proceedings at 5.40 p.m. and stand so adjourned until the next duly called meeting of council. All in favor? Good night, everyone. We are adjourned. <laughs>